Oh, Steve and Larson! Don't you dare be sour. Clap for yourselves and feel the power. Yes. And all you people out there, you're watching Going In Raw with Steve Larson. <laughs> Hey, friend, old Steve here. Hey, Larson. And welcome back to Going In Raw, the only pro wrestling podcast you need to be listening to right here at youtube.com forward slash Stephen Larson, available wherever podcasts can be found. And, of course, taped live at the Twitch at twitch.tv forward slash Stephen Larson. A big night for wrestling. Our Rampage review is also available at our YouTube channel uh, and in the audio podcast realm. Want to give a quick shout out before we get started on the show today to a couple new patrons here. Zach DeHack, a bit rusty, Nathan Sheets, uh, Prezemslaw Justice, El Gorilla Baby, and Curtis Hinkle. Thank you so much for your support. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. On the Patreon, you can get the show in the audio realm ad free, plus our bonus episodes, two of them a week. Uh, plus, we do GTA on Fridays. Um, yeah. So it's a lot of fun. It's a whole community here at going in raw thanks so much for the support uh Thank you. and uh yeah before we get into our super size smackdown review mm -hmm. uh there has been just a a, a a war of words taking place especially just heated up because of tonight's very unique event so of course smackdown booted from fox proper because of the mlb they yeah, said playoffs. you're out of here and, uh, and they landed, of course, on FS1. Now, about a year ago, SmackDown did about a million total viewership on FS1. This year, they're loading it up with Brock, Sasha versus Becky. They made it uh, super. Happy Corbin. Uh, huge oh. show. Uh, and not only did they do that, they went a half hour deeper, which would, go, which would overlap with the first half hour of AW Rampage. So Correct. in response, Tony Khan said... Hey, fine. We're going to give you guys Daniel Bryan, Brian Danielson versus Minoru Suzuki. Daniel Bryanson. On a one hour buy in, an hour and a half overlap between these two shows. Great. It was great. Um, it was a lot to watch. It was. It was, it was hard. It was hard because it's hard to pay attention to for one Difficult. thing for me. Not yes. only do we have to watch both things, we got to take notes at the same time. And I know entertain the friendos on a live stream. Thank you Fire again best. to the yes. enforcer for hanging out yes. with us, by the way. Yes. Um, so uh, it was a really fun night, a really unique moment. And leading up to it, man, all sorts of people are talking about all sorts of things. You got top dollar talking about a W roster members, young bucks wearing uh, uh, vans and ASICs when they claim they wear Jordans. And then they respond by changing their bio. And then he responded today with the diss track. My goodness. And uh, hopping into this beef was the tribal chief himself, Indeed. the top Indeed. dog Indeed. of WWE. He had an interview with yeah. Complex Sports. He was he asked did. about AEW. What did he say, Larson? He had to say, uh, quote, we're trying to engage the new viewer, also servicing our hardcore fan base, and give them compelling s stories to fill them as well. I don't know if I said it before, but I've said it. But I don't know if I've said it before, but I've said it before. When the audience is probably the biggest character in your show, that's strange to me. You'll hear it all the time the reviews and the comparisons, I think because they are the new kids on the block. They're the cool kids in town, I guess, because of how premature and how novel it kind of still is. I think they're still being ba uh, babied by the, these hardcore wrestling fans, which is fine. That's great. I don't think anybody's going to ever, especially from a performance standpoint, say, oh, no, there's more opportunities out there. That sucks. So it's not a bad thing. It's a great thing for professional wrestling. It's just a weird argument because there's so much bias and there's so much, I'm on this side, I'm not going to open my mind to their side, and it goes both ways. And so he was asked about potentially having a match against Phil, CM Punk, CM Punk, CM well, let's, Punk. Well, let's, let's break down that first part. Oh, sorry. Uh, do you believe that AEW is being babied by hardcore wrestling fans, Larson? I don't even know what that really means. Like, <laughs> do, they have, they, do they give AEW uh, more leeway? For their mistakes, more benefit. Is that what he's doubt. referring to? Maybe. I mean, look. Here's my thing. I do. I'll be perfectly honest. 
in certain situations, I have no problem giving AEW the benefit of the doubt where I won't give it to WWE because there is a pattern. There is a 60 year history to look back on with WWE yes. uh, and, and, and understand whether or not you can give them the benefit of the doubt or you can forgive certain mistakes. AEW, yes, they are a new company, but clearly their fan outreach va- is vastly superior to WWE. And they do something novel in AEW. They actually give the fans what they want sometimes. They 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 focus on that. And WWE, they will give you moments. Bianca Belair winning at WrestleMania, Bianca mm-hmm. Belair winning at the Rumble, Drew McIntyre, all that stuff. They'll give you moments, but in between those moments, sometimes they can go long stretches where you get stuff like Finn Balor collapsing on a on a on a uh, turnbuckle. Happy and, Corbin. Yeah, just happy Corbin. Any of that stuff. It's just corny bullshit. And yeah, you can go yeah, a couple weeks here. We had Raws that were very serviceable. And they were seemingly giving us what we want. Wrestling and and good character moments and good story stuff. But yeah. they kind of don't get the benefit of the doubt because they will also do corny, goofy shit and, and story beats that, that don't make sense. So with AEW, yeah, they're new. But they seem to be coming out pretty strong. So I wouldn't say they're being babied it's hey this is a company that has brought a lot of lapsed fans back anecdotally speaking how many people have we talked to oh yeah i got out of wrestling now i'm back in it because Mm -hmm. Mm aw so so uh but you know that's fine i understand that's going to be the wwe's current line when it comes to towing that company line is oh they're new they're going through a honeymoon phase two years um and uh, and yeah, but you know it's funny because he'll he'll go from guy who's towing the company line, and then he, of course he's going to do that. He's Roman Reigns, yeah. To you know him saying, yeah, it's great to have leverage. <laughs> it's great yeah. to have more opportunities for people to work. Yeah. Uh, so, anyways, yeah, he was also asked about CM Punk, and here's where some shots were thrown. Oh yes, because he said this. He said a match with Punk is not going to elevate me at all. He's older now. I haven't really seen a full match. I've seen a clip or two, and to me. A step or two has been lost. Then also, he got his his ass whooped in the in the UFC. I don't think anybody really really believes someone two hundred pounds soaking wet with no explosive bone in their body could ever really do anything to me. I'm six foot three, two hundred and sixty five pounds, a legitimate athlete who can throw some weight around and has been on the gridiron at the highest level, D one, all ACC. I probably would have maintained in the NFL if my health issues didn't happen when I was twenty two years old. So, I mean, when it comes down to it, I'll throw him and pretty much the rest of that roster out the club. No problem. They're just little brothers, you know? Wow. <laughs> wow. He's a big dude. <laughs> yeah. Again, in a way, towing the company line that apparently that's what Vince wants these days. Well, yeah. You know, also, you know, he ain't lying. He's a big dude. Punk is he old. Is. <laughs> But it's all it's all a bunch of goofy. But look, man, if WWE had signed CM Punk, I have no doubt we'd be seeing Roman Reigns be finding out just what CM Punk could do in this, mm-hmm. you know, the, the fantasy world that we're all uh, engaged in and having a good time yes. with. So it's all this is all this is all in good fun. Yeah, it's a trash talk back and forth. So that being all said, what did you think of tonight's super size smack? I thought I thought it was a really fun episode of Rampage. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's what I was taking notes for predominantly. Yeah. I was trying to pay attention to SmackDown. Um, I thought Sasha and Becky was phenomenal. That was phenomenal. I'm surprised we actually had someone to win that match. I thought we were going to have, I mean, it wasn't exactly a clean finish, but I was expecting there to be no finish. Yeah, right. A DQ or something yeah. like that, you know? Um, Again, speaks to the benefit of the doubt. <laughs> yeah. How many times they set up huge matches that are they give time, they're really good, and then they don't give us a satisfying conclusion. Yeah, yeah, all the time. Yeah, um, you know, uh, and then you know, a- apart from that, it was kind of standard SmackDown. I was kind of surprised if you look at it just in terms of the layout of both shows, the kickoff, uh, the second hour going head to head against Rampage. I was expecting something like pretty huge, yeah, to happen to make sure fans stay. Instead, we get Seth Rollins taking four minutes to say he's not scared of hell in the cell. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, it's funny because looking at the breakdown here, there was like, I mean, if you include, yeah, there was, it was too long. I mean, yeah, there was like, what, maybe two matches more than usual? 
I mean, mm-hmm. they, they gave Usos Street Profits plenty of times. A really fun match. Very yeah, brutal. It was a fun match. Very, yeah. very, very physical. Um, they gave Sasha Becky tons of time, and that was a pay per view uh-huh. level match. Yeah, it was really good. It was um, really good. Uh, so, yeah, it just seemed like SmackDown, but just, yeah, just longer, just longer. It seemed like it, if, if, if it wasn't for the extra half hour and they stopped it, whatever closed the final or right before. Uh, or if they had if they had Becky and Sasha happen, but have the finish we expected, it would have seemed like a, a, a typical episode of SmackDown for the most part. Yeah, yeah, there wasn't anything really like there was still some more uh, head games with Brock Lesnar and Roman Reigns. Roman, yeah. So you know the thing that I like that's consistent about Roman is that his his arrogance, his hubris as a character, really does leave him open to manipulation fairly easily. And and I appreciate that, like you know, when Daniel uh, Bryan was still with the company, and you know, uh, uh, he was trying to goad Roman into into fighting him or whatever. Mm-hmm. Roman was mm-hmm. like, "I don't need to sign this contract." And it took him all of three minutes to get into Roman's head and get him to sign that contract. It took yep. no effort at all. And so you get this kind of stuff where you know, uh, at the end, which is a really terrific. It was re- it was fairly short in terms yeah. of a contract signing. And, uh, you know, Paul Heyman reviews Roman's contract at his request. He says, okay, everything's here. Sign the contract. He signs it. Brock just sort of stares at Roman, signs the entire page. And Roman's like, oh, you must be a dumbass. Big dumb farmer. Didn't even read it. And Brock laughs and says, Roman, I already read the contract this morning with my advocate, Paul Heyman. And then then he gets up and leaves. He leaves and Roman's like, so confused. It's like, man... Get your shit together. You know he's playing these games with you. I know. Uh, I know. So it was it was a really fun finish for uh, for SmackDown. But yeah, it was just it was just SmackDown but big. That's all it was. Um, yeah. With with longer. Uh, yeah, longer. With, really, with with one really 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 good match. With one terrific match. Yeah, which I'm glad we got that. That was that was a big deal. Let's take a quick break here to get a word from our sponsor, BetterHelp. Several years ago, while dealing with severe anxiety, I learned the importance of talking to a therapist. But I also learned that it could be really difficult to find the right person to talk to. Today, BetterHelp is providing a safe, private online environment where your needs will be assessed. And you'll be matched with your own licensed personal therapist. BetterHelp isn't a crisis line, nor is it self-help. It's professional counseling done securely online, all without having to sit in another uncomfortable waiting room. BetterHelp is dedicated to facilitating great therapeutic matches. Send your counselor messages at any time or schedule regular phone or video sessions. And they've made it free and easy to change therapists if needed. And you don't have to limit yourself to counselors in your area. BetterHelp services are available worldwide, so you can find the expertise you need regardless of location. BetterHelp is affordable, convenient, and everything you share is confidential. We want you to start living a happier life today. As a Going It Raw listener, you'll get 10% off your first month by visiting our sponsor, at betterhelp.com slash raw. Join over 1 million people who have taken charge of their mental health. Again, that's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash raw. And before we get back to the show, let's get a word in from our sponsor, Decked. You know, Larson, I'm sure you know a truck owner out there who has a horror story from this time of year where they left something in the back of their truck, whether it be tools, camping gear, or sports stuff, and had it all ruined after the heavens opened up and dumped rain or snow all over that stuff. Yeah, and really, what are you supposed to do in that situation? You're supposed to bring everything indoors? You're supposed to cover it up with a tarp? Regardless what you do, it's going to be a hassle, which is why we highly recommend Decked. Yeah, not only does Decked make organizing and accessing all that stuff you have in your truck bed easier, the Decked drawer system is weatherproof, so it protects and secures all your stuff from Mother Nature. And each of Deck's two full bed-length drawers can carry up to 200 pounds of whatever you want to put in them. And the drawers roll out about waist-high, giving you easy access to your tools and gear. Plus, Deck is 100% made in the USA and backed by a lifetime no-hassle warranty and offers second-to-none customer service. So protect your stuff with Deck. Get your Deck drawer system at Deck.com slash raw and get free shipping. That's decked.com slash raw for free shipping on your decked drawer system. Decked.com slash raw. Um, so uh, anyways, Edge kicked us off on this you episode you know of SmackDown. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, I'm sorry. A giant recap kicked us off. There's oh, yeah. still too many of those. Um, 
He says this all started seven. He sort of recap stuff again. He said this started seven well, hold years on, hold ago. On. Let, while we're talking recaps, why do they have to recap the Happy Corbin segment from last week? It's no good. one loses anything by not recapping that. You don't gain anything by seeing that again. Why is it they don't understand that there's some stuff that people just don't they just don't want to see? Like happy it's not this isn't I don't want to see Corbin get his butt kicked because of this stuff. I just don't want to see him. I want him off my TV because of this. Yes. No, this, this is not and this is turn the channel stuff. This is like when he was what the what was his the constable of raw. Yeah. But this is oh, worse. Oh man. He's not he's not on my screen as much, but when he's on, I literally want to turn the channel because it's so bad. It's so painful too, because what he was doing as 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 broke Corbin was really good. Yeah, no, absolutely. I know, I know. It was good stuff. And you thought that, hey, maybe they'll but no, they don't. Anyways, Edge says Anyways. uh he says uh it started seven years ago when he tried to use me as a stepping stone. He says beating me wasn't enough. You got greedy, you went to my home, not my house, my home where I break bread with my family, where we laugh and cry, where I tuck my girls in at night. Should have seen it coming, though. I did the same thing. Remember, I went to see his dad's house and slapped him around. He says, I underestimated you, but I shouldn't have because that would be like underestimating myself, and I never do that. When we see our mistakes, guys like you and I, we capitalize on them. He says, you're the only guy that comes close to matching my intensity. But note that I said close. Not quite there yet. And then go backstage. See, Seth is watching this whole time. Mm-hmm. And he says, you know what? I was wrong. Are you edge light? Nope. You are your own man, Seth freaking Rollins. But I need to end this because if I don't, our families are going to keep on suffering. I could do the same thing to you. I could go to your house and see Bex. We have some history, but I'm going to leave you a husk of the man everyone sees now. A few weeks ago, you said you feel sorry for me, but that would be a mistake. You never feel sympathy for the devil. Because I will not hesitate when I have you under my boot. I will not have a second thought about it. So it's fitting that our story ends in hell in a cell. I know you're watching. Lean in and listen closely because this is a blueprint for your future. At hell in a cell, I'm going to scar your soul uh, the type that you never heal from. It was a really terrifically delivered promo. It was it was um, well done. Not really necessary to be honest. Neither, neither this nor Seth are really necessary but they're both really well delivered. And yeah. that's one thing about WWE is that sometimes they will give you stuff that isn't really necessary, but it's well done. But mm-hmm. I still would rather them advance something else or give more mm-hmm. time to something else. Queen's crown. Yeah. Instead of doing this. I mean, I would yeah. actually just as a fan of the product, I would actually prefer the type of recap package that we saw with uh, uh, like with AEW, how they add like new interview footage, you know, kind of yeah, like yeah, a, yeah, yeah. what are they doing? Um, NXT or they did uh, prime, oh, the target. prime target. Yeah. Prime target stuff. Give us instead of this and Seth, give us like a, a seven a minute good, prime target. A, yeah. A good. Well put together four to seven minute video package. Yeah. 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 Um, so, yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, after that, we had Finn Balor versus Sami Zayn, the semifinals for. King of the Ring tournament, SmackDown side of the bracket. They each had promos before the match. Yeah, uh, Finn's talking about the man who wears crowns should bring honor and respect. Sammy only respects his voice. Tonight, I'm going to shut up Sammy. And Sammy says, who doesn't love a good Cinderella story? He sort of uh, talks about his own story being a Cinderella story. Because <laughs> he's the victim in everything. Exactly. He yeah. says, about someone who overcomes every obstacle becomes King of the Ring. Mm. Uh, it's a fun match. That bit where Sammy reversed the Finn's kind of like reverse DDT elbow thing at Blue Thunderbomb was awesome. Yeah, this is a rad match. That was this is really, really well match. done. Uh, Finn, saw Finn hit a sling blade, hits a shotgun drop kick, goes for a coup de gras. Sammy avoids it. Uh, Sammy rolls up Finn. That gets him a two count. He's looking for another exploder into the corner. Instead, Finn reverses that into a double stomp. Hits a pair of shotgun drop kicks on Sammy and then hits a coup de gras to get the win. Yep. I like uh, the false finish there at the end where he thought, Finn, oh, he's getting the coup de gras. Nope. Yeah, that was good. And that him. was good. Uh, after that, we had a Drew McIntyre package. He's coming to SmackDown. So for the 500,000 or so that don't watch Raw but do watch SmackDown. Now you know who he is. Now you know who he is. Hey, who's this guy? Who's this giant Scotsman? On my TV. After that, we had another recap package uh, about Paul Heyman, Roman, and Brock. This and was well done. This is something more along the lines of the Prime Target stuff because there was like new footage of like some yeah. good like atmospheric booty 
yeah. footage with Heyman, you know? Yeah, this was really good, yeah. Uh, after that, we had uh, – this This is my this is the story that I like these days. I, lo- I really like this tonight. Uh, probably would have made more sense next week after Crown Jewel, but given who came out. So uh, we were supposed to get Naomi versus uh, Sonya Deville. Sonya Deville's mm-hmm. first time in action 14 months. Uh, before that, we had this cool Naomi promo where she says, I'm finally getting in the ring with Sonya. She took my kindness for a weakness, but that was a big mistake on her part. Now she's going to feel the glow. And she puts on some really cool sunglasses. She looks like a cyberpunk character. She's great. Uh, she goes to the ring. While her music is playing towards the tail end of it, Sonya comes out and says, okay, stop that music. She has a suit on. And uh, she's like, you know, you were in such a huff last week. You left my office before I told you the entirety of the match. She said it's going to be Naomi versus me and Shayna Baszler. Now, I love that Shayna's had this sort of slight repackage, refocusing of her character, if you will, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because this is scary now. It's like, oh, shit. I thought Shayna was going to be a full-on proxy for Sonya, and maybe Sonya would like distract here and there. Sonya's yeah. ring ready, man. She got in there. Not a lot, but uh, but it was enough. And Shayna didn't look great considering this is a handicap match. But the flip side of that, Naomi looked like a million bucks. Yes. She yes. was she was holding her own against two people that, that were getting on her. Um, so uh, Sonya comes out, slaps Naomi, then runs away. Shayna grabs Naomi, uh, uh, but Shayna immediately eats, eats a kick from Naomi. Naomi chases Sonya some more, but she ends up getting back in the ring and then dropping a running knee on Naomi. It was the first action she's had in 14 months, and it was awesome. Yeah. Uh, Shayna picks her up. Sonya punches her, uh, Naomi rather, uh, twice, starts yelling at her, real John at her. Naomi comes back, kicks her. Uh, Naomi hits a springboard kick on Shayna, goes up top. Sonya grabs her leg to bring her down. Naomi grabs uh, uh, Sonya's hair. Shayna gets the clutch on, and uh, Naomi uh, fades and and gets basically knocked out, uh, or, or passes out, rather. And then Sonya puts her foot on her, steps on her, says, count the pin. She gets mm-hmm. the win. So mm-hmm. uh, I thought this was a good way to step up that feud. I'm looking yeah. forward to when it actually is Sonya Deville's real one-on-one in-ring return. Yeah. Yeah, I like same. this feud. This is the, this is a good yeah, some good, good storytelling. Been good stuff so far. Uh, we got a hit row video package. I believe the same one they ran last week. And then we got a Sasha Banks promo. She's talking about how we're six days away from Crown Royal. She'll uh, make history again when she gets her SmackDown Women's title back. Uh, she came back to right some wrongs last week. Uh, she did that when she beat Bianca. Tonight is Becky. She says she's ready to conquer and destroy all because she's the boss. Yep. Uh, yeah, after that, Seth promo, yeah. yeah, we had Seth Rollins' rebuttal. Uh, he comes out, laughs, says, Edge came out here to convince you that he had any chance at Crown Jewel. What a laugh. Hell must be frozen over here in California because Edge finally said he was wrong and I am not Edge Light. He, I'm going to say this very slowly so everybody in the back can hear. I am in no way intimidated or scared to face Edge at Hell in a Cell. He says, we are cut from the same cloth, but there is one difference. I've been in Hell in a Cell matches, and you not as much. He says, I am the man I am today because of Hell in a Cell, which is interesting. He was in reference to the Broken Skull Sessions. Yeah. Yeah, where he said that without uh, the Bray Wyatt match, this character would have, would have happened. Yeah. Exactly. And he says, uh, I am the visionary, and then he drops the mic. Mic drop, yes. Yeah. Uh, then we get Carmella backstage as Lena walks up to her. She's talking about, hey, if I win this tournament, I want to beat the best, including Carmella. Let's go out there and have a clean match uh, and, 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 and stuff. So don't worry about wearing your mask. It's Let's fine. be classy and have a yeah. gentleman's agreement. Carmella is very happy about that. Uh, so uh, they, they, they start off a uh, friendly enough bout. Eventually gets chippy when Mella hits. I didn't see what the stray shot was, but uh, she gets she she went a little too. I guess a little yeah, too. Yeah, Carmella snug. hit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, and Zelina got pissed off. She's like, "Ooh, I'm sorry about that." And then Zelina like attacks her, starts trying to you know punch her in the face. Mella runs, goes for her mask, but Liv Morgan has it. She's like, yeah. "Ooh, I got this." So uh, she threatens to punch Carmella right in the face. Carmella gets back in. Zelina Vega rolls up for two. The whole thing took maybe three minutes. Yeah, yeah, it was pretty quick. Uh, then we got, oh gosh, Happy Corbin Your segment. Your favorite moment. Uh, he tells Madcap Moss to tell a joke. He does. It's awful. Another joke about Owens. He's going for another one. And then Rick Boogs 
interrupts them on the stage. He's like, I'm not here to hear jokes. I want to rock. He starts to rock. Knock more comes out. And then Street Profits do two. They have a match next against the Usos. So what does Nakamura going to defend the Intercontinental title? That's what I want. Nakamura just came out to introduce the Street Profits? I think he just wanted to rock. He just has his own little rock segment. I, mean, I know he's done this before. Hey, we always get confused. Like, wait, why is he coming out? Because he wants to rock. He wants to rock. Well, Boogs wants to rock. But Nakamura wants to rock, too. They're friends. Oh, they both want to Maybe one of the reasons Nakamura is friends with Boogs because he likes to rock. He likes to rock. I thought Nakamura likes to surf. Boogs rocks. Do you think Boogs surfs in response? He's like, hey, I want to know how to surf. You want to know how to rock. I don't know. The whole thing is silly. Yeah, I want him to defend. I want to see Nakamura actually wrestle people. Um, Yeah, yeah, Street Profits of the Usos. Man, kendo sticks, tables, all sorts of great brutality in this match. Uh, it was a street fight. Uh, it was. Unfortunately, the Usos came up short. Montez, no. Uh, yeah, no. Uh, 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 Dawkins. Angelo Dawkins got pinned yeah. when yeah. the Usos hit their uh, their double splash thing. Stereo super kicks, double splashes. Yeah, Dawkins uh, ate the pin after Ford was put through a table ringside. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, then we got a Becky interview. She's talking about what greatness is. She's done everything. She's had a baby. She's won, won a title in record, record time. Uh, greatness is big time. It says here in your notes. I was watching Rampage. Ball. So yeah, she was saying like, you know what? She was like, hey, you know, was, she was like, you know what? Greatness is greatness is coming back, winning the title in record time. Greatness is going away, having a baby, and coming back and doing that. Greatness. Is, she was all talking about herself. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Uh, and then yeah, Sasha versus Becky, just Fantastic. a terrific match. So Bianca comes Fantastic. down for commentary uh, in advance of the match, um, but this was just man. Really, really, really good stuff. Um, yeah, really good. Fast paced too. Never let up. I do appreciate that Becky's character is still just. You can tell in the match she's still shaking off some ring rust in character. You know, um, mm-hmm. like she doesn't have control as much as like she would have in the past, especially against Sasha. Who, granted, she's not around a ton. But has been around a bit more than she has over the past, you know, two years, oh, or yeah, yeah. eighteen months. Yeah, yeah. Um, so uh, no, I thought this was all really good stuff. So the finish, a lot of back and forth between Becky and Sasha. Uh, the finish saw uh, so uh, Becky gets a disarmer on Sasha. Sa- Sasha sort of counters that with a roll up, gets two for that. Becky gets a roll up for two. Becky tries for the rock bottom. Uh, Sasha counters, backstabber, bank statement. Becky is able to get to the ropes, but she goes over the ropes, uh, over the apron. And she tries to grab onto the steel steps to get leverage so Sasha can't roll her back or can't like pull her back in. When she does that, Bianca comes over because earlier Becky had thrown, uh, there was a great spot where uh, they go to the outside. Becky charges at Sasha. Sasha gets out of the way. Becky ends up punching Bianca. Mm-hmm. And then Sasha gets up on the table and gives some double knees to Becky against the barricade. Really great spot. Yeah, yeah, so Bianca, still pissed off, goes over there and whips Becky's hand off the stairs which allows Sasha to get the roll up for three. Mm-hmm. Uh, so uh, that happens. So Becky has a loss against Sasha here. Uh, Pierce comes running out and starts yelling at people to set up for the contract signing. So what, in like the last couple of weeks, Sasha's beaten both Bianca and Becky? Yeah. Yeah, because of the other ones. Yeah. 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 Do you think? Yeah. And this was the go home to. Uh, Do you think it's uh, possible that since Becky's going to. Raw, but she has a SmackDown belt. The Sasha could win that match at Crown Royal. I had thought that originally, but that was predicated on Charlotte losing her title in which advance could still of that. On, could still happen on Monday. Which could still happen on Monday. Somebody here in the chat, I think, had uh, Charlotte versus Bianca for the Raw title is happening on Monday. That's been no. announced. Well, there you go. It could happen then. So yeah, I guess we'll see if 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 Bianca wins the Raw title. Pretty good chance that Sasha wins. At then a, Sasha will one hundred percent win. That's yeah. totally happening. Yeah. Um. But I don't know. I feel like there's going to be some big. I I I, I just doubt they're going to do the title. Trade. Trade. Yeah, I hope not. I hope not. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, Pierce comes out. He's yelling at people to set up the, the the set, the ring for the contract signing. Roman's out first, then Brock. Roman's 
has a uh, Heyman review the contract. Heyman looks through it, says everything is in there as you requested. He says, I, my counsel is that you sign the contract. So Roman does, he hands it to Brock. Brock just opens, as you mentioned, opens the things up, just puts his name on the whole page. And then that's when Roman's like, hey, you must be a dumbass, dumbass farmer. You didn't even read it. And Brock laughs and says, yeah, I read it this morning with my advocate, Paul Heyman, he gets up at least. <laughs> Great. Brilliant. Oh, that was good stuff. You're just a dumbass farmer. That's rude, Roman. What the hell? <laughs> Man. Uh, all right. Uh, let's answer some questions. Wolfpack for sure. life says, uh, did you know Amos is only, how old do you think Amos is? Take a guess. He gives us the answer here. Very close. 27. He says, when has a wrestler's age surprised you? Ooh, I feel like this happened recently. Or I thought someone was much. I thought someone was much older than what they actually were. Oh, don't remember um, what it was. Um, it surprised me when I found out the age difference between Trent Seven and Tyler Bate. Oh. I was like, oh my god, he's really he's like because at the time he was like thirty seven, and Tyler Bate was like I don't know fifteen or something, twenty two, I guess. Twenty, um, yeah, twenty two, I think. No, somebody recently did surprise me with how old they were. But yeah, I I don't remember who it is either. Yeah, I don't remember. Don't remember. Maybe I'll re- think about it. Um, uh, you mentioned Charlotte versus Bianca on Raw. White Brownie has full preview here. Big E and Drew versus the Dirty Dogs. Ugh, again. Why? Why? They did that two weeks ago. That they moved on. And they just had a tag match last week where they already proved they can't work what together. Is that? That's so dumb. Um, of course. Xavier Woods versus Jinder, Dewdrop versus Shayna, and then RK Bro versus Street Profits. Announced for all Street Profits aren't actually, I mean, they got drafted, but that doesn't take effect till not this upcoming Monday, Monday afterwards on mm-hmm. Raw for Raw. Yeah, they're so they, they're, they're playing that so fast. And oh yeah, I know. It's uh, Wesder says Nakamura's last intercontinental run in New Japan was amazing. Dude was a boss. Wishes the VIC run was like that, but that is impossible in the current state of the company. Yep, that's true. Yep. Uh, this is a great question, Alex Foster. If you guys got split up in the draft, what would your new singles gimmicks be? So we can't be the shit twins anymore. Uh, no. Um, I would be I would just steal um I I I I'd, 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 I'd be Patrick Bateman Okay. I would I would be uh, like a yuppie serial killer, like Dexter Loomis, but like you know a, a hedge fund manager. All right, all right. I'd, I'd okay. show up in a nice suit, like you know, like a, what's his face, uh, low key would have like a suit yeah. on. Yeah, but it'd be spattered with blood. It'd, it'd be that I would have like the raincoat on, the see through raincoat with like blood all over it. Mm-hmm. And be like, I don't know where this guy's been. But uh, yeah. evidently, he's been up to no good. I think he's doing more than just hedge fund trading. Considering we've been a tag team for a better part of a decade, suddenly I, I we got split up. I'd be like, well, I got to find a new partner because that's okay. just what I'm used to. Yeah. So I would try to uh, convince people to form put a uh, put together tag team. Okay, okay, that's good. Every week, I try to recruit somebody else. Of course, probably get denied a lot. But I'd just say, like, hey, this tag team. I'm a tag team specialist. You. You know, I don't know. Like, I tried to make a pitch, and then uh, we'll see what happens. You know Probably what you just... could do? How about this? You don't find a partner, so you're like, man, how about this? How about I mentally project a partner, the perfect partner? And you try that in tag team matches, and it doesn't work because it's like a handicap match. But yeah. then you take that philosophy really to do singles that. matches, and now in your mind, it's a handicap match. You have the advantage – and you start winning matches. All right, that's good. You like that? That's good. That's good. And then you start getting where you start like naming your invisible partner. There we go. It's like, what's your partner's name? Steak. There you go. <laughs> Come on, Steak. Let's go. Let's go, Steak. 
Huge win today. <laughs> uh, Jeremiah P. Since I'm going to Raw in Sacramento on Monday, power rank the five best things I could have done in the area instead of going to Raw. In the area or the arena? Because I, I think there's even five things in that amazing arena you could do. It's a nice arena. Get on your phone on their Wi-Fi and watch. There's actually Raw. some. There's like a a, a a a good ice cream place in the the little shopping center. Oh, they got the a arena. ton of great. Yeah. Oh, you mean in, in the arena or in the? No, not in the, the arena, but like yeah. the, there's always entertainment. Oh, there's the a bunch complex. of stuff over there. Yeah. 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 Uh, let's see. Go get a nice meal at uh, one of the many fine restaurants in downtown Sacramento. Go to the Crest Theater. Yes. And watch something that's happening there. Uh, Wayne Scoggins, we get this question a lot. Who do you think is going to be the first big name to jump from AEW to WWE? He says MJF. I don't think that's going to happen. First big name to jump from AEW to WWE. I mean, I assume we t- like Mox or Jericho don't really count. Okay, those don't count. I mean, they've been Most, using them a lot more lately, but I was going to say somebody like, oh, oh, you know, if if they'll take them, if they'll take them right now, Brian Cage would. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Uh, White Brownie, with this being the go-home SmackDown, what's the go-home math? These SmackDown matches, Roman versus Brock and the women's triple threat. So... Sasha won. There was yeah, Sasha won. So that's more or less stand tall math. There wasn't a post match angle that would change that. Yeah. So Sasha's beat both her opponents in that bout. Um, remains to be seen what happens on Raw, especially with Bianca getting that title shot against Charlotte. If Bianca wins the Rob title, is basically I feel like a guarantee that Sasha wins that the belt at Crown Royal. And that that could be a great story beat for Becky also. It's like, oh, man, now I don't have a title. The two people, I don't have a title now. Because mm. she does, there's like a desperate sort of feel to her character right now. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Um, and then Roman and Brock. I mean, uh, I mean, there's nothing really, I guess, in a sense, Brock got Stan Tall Math because he humiliated Roman. Embarrassed yeah. him publicly. But I don't know if the math is as strong for that kind of stand tall math as opposed to like physical, you know. Yeah, no, I think tall. I think the story of that match is going to be Roman's going to have his doubts about Paul Heyman, but they'll figure yeah. it out by the end of it, and, and Roman's going to win. Or the doubts will cost Roman the match. Yeah, Rich kind of has a, simple, a similar question. Do you see any upsets at all happening? I mean, Edge is going to win. Um, Monsoor is going to win. Yeah. Uh, Shayna's uh, gonna win. Shayna will. Shayna. That's that's the one that I'm like. Uh, like Finn versus Jinder. If that's the match, uh, oh, yeah, I don't. Yeah. I I don't. I'll believe. I know that Roman just pinned the the uh, the demon, but I have a much harder time believing, even with interference, that Jinder would pin Finn. But I suppose yeah, no. it's possible. Um. I don't know about the. I, I'm I'm apt to say I. It's probably going to be Shayna. Yeah, I would think so. Uh, but she still has to get through Dewdrop, so I don't know. That one I'm kind of not sure about. I mean, Man, you can't really discount the the possibility of Dewdrop winning either. So I know. They get a, a face and heel in the final. I know. Um. Yeah, boy, Zelina Vega's going to, to, to Crown Jewel, huh? Yeah, that's an easy win for whoever she's facing. Probably? I don't know. They're uh, not nobody's it. gonna pin Shayna or Dewdrop. You wouldn't think so. Dang MQ with season three of the Mandalorian shooting now. How long will Sasha's reign be if she wins the Crown Jewel? And why should Shayna be the one to take the title off her? That's a, that's actually a pretty good point because I get the feeling that Sasha's not going to be like a full full time person, but I could mm-hmm. be wrong about that. Yeah, who knows? Who knows? Mm-hmm. Uh, Jeremiah P. If the Sacramento Kings were a wrestler, who would they be? Oh, jeez. So uh, who? Someone's got a lot of potential, a lot of talent. Hasn't ever quite really put it all together. Oh man, that's a great question. Is it Brian Cage? 
<laughs> Get out of here with that. <laughs> he's from the area. I know um, he's from Chico, I think. Yeah. Brian Cage. Yeah, why not? <laughs> <laughs> Jeremiah says, no, not Cage. I think it's Ryan Cage. <laughs> oh, man. Makes it hard to root for him. That's the Kings. Um, let's see here. Uh, David Matuszek, what is the possibility of Vince realizing that AEW is competition, even though, even though those around him are downplaying the situation as a way of cowardice? Yeah, that was another thing. You see that? Uh, God, who had that one? Was it Fightful Select? Or Matt, maybe it was the Matt Men podcast. Said that, like, the, you know, the chatter in the WWE offices is like uh, people think that uh, they're telling Vince that Tony Khan is going to spend himself into a uh, failure and that uh, I guess the, the word going around is they're saying, well, Ted Turner couldn't beat us and Ted Turner's smarter than Tony Khan. And so uh, Tony responded on Twitter saying WCW made a lot of mistakes that I don't plan on making. Scooter says it was Meltzer. Who said that. It was Meltzer. Okay. I apologize. Okay. I'm sorry. Uh, Dave Meltzer. trying to find an excuse not to take AEW seriously, huh? Oh, yeah, Wrestling Observer Newsletter. Um, there's a perception when WWE that Khan will spend so much money and lose so much money in the long run as he keeps AEW going. Yeah. Silly stuff. Yeah, that is weird. Um, Mondo, if Xavier Woods makes it to the finals to face Finn, do you think they'd let Woods get the win? And if not, do you think there's any chance of a backlash against Finn Balor since it's clear everyone wants Xavier Woods to win? Um, I don't think there's much of a chance of a backlash because of the way Finn presents himself. He's mm -hmm. a badass. And he's, he's you know, nobody's, nobody's going to be like, oh, I can't stand that guy. No, people like when people do cool things. Mm -hmm. And if it's a good match... You know, I'm, I'm sure people. Some people will be upset because Xavier Woods yeah, is great. Be disappointed, yeah, they'll yeah, be disappointed. Great. But I don't think there'll be a backlash against Finn. Yeah, probably not. It ain't probably his call. Not. Yeah, Moses opposes us. Where do you see Rick Boogs in a year? Honestly, probably still doing the same thing. That's exactly my answer. Doing the same thing. Yeah. Uh, Blake Whitehouse, what a great question. We'll end on this one. How long does a thrown together tag team need to be together before they lose the thrown together aspect? I felt like the bar was by the time they were coming to an end. Like, <laughs> okay, they, don't, they don't feel like a thrown together tag team anymore. Yeah, right. Yeah. An entire think, cycle I, of a tag team is what it I takes. think you need to get. I think if you get a second reign as tag champions, mm. at that juncture, you're not a thrown together tag team. <laughs> yeah. Because thrown together tag teams very often get tag title reigns. Mm -hmm. But if you go and get them a second time, I feel like at that point, you're not a thrown together tag team. You need that and you need a name for your team. I think those are the two things. I would say this. God, does don't, does the, do the dirty dogs? They're still thrown. They still feel thrown together, don't they? They've only had one tag title reign. That's why. Yeah, you're on to something then, because they have everything else. They have their own theme music. They have a but name. The name. I don't think the name is official though. That's just what they call themselves. <laughs> their their Tron still has like their Come their own on. individual logos. Hold on, WWE.com. I don't think they call. The I don't think they're officially. I don't think they're officially the Dirty Dogs. Is there a is the preview up on actual like thing on the website? Come on! Oh, here we go. Okay. No, that's not it. Where's the damn preview? Okay, what's this? This is like a preview for the match. Hold on a second. Uh, nope, raw results. I don't, I don't have it here. All right. All right. I'll have to tell you. I, it's, it's funny, though, because I think you're right. Yeah. A second reign. 
I find that that is the ultimate. The dirty dogs. Okay, it says the dirty dogs on the Twitter announcement. Um, even if the dirty dogs had a second reign, I don't. They're they are the worst. They're like the least cohesive. Not like thrown together to like they just don't seem. But they are. I mean, they dress similar. They have matching jackets. They have. They have, they have, a, have a name. They have theirs. a theme. To just but match their individual themes. Still yeah. feel so thrown together. Because they were, I just recognize them as singles guys for so long. I know that beer money, I understand that, but like. Anyways, that's yeah, a, no, that, that, no, no. you just left me flustered. Thanks Good. for the great question. That's why I want to end all our shit. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. We appreciate it. Till next time, we'll talk to you later. Goodbye.